As you know, we're planning to fly across Canada from the West Coast all the way to Prince Edward Island on the East Coast, with a diversion into the U.S. for a conference in Pittsburgh. The first couple of days are all about making our way through the Rocky Mountains into Alberta. It makes for some of the most beautiful flying there is, but it also requires a little extra thought and planning, especially if one wants to avoid turbulence through the highest passes. If we were flying in an Air Canada jet from Vancouver to say Calgary, it's pretty straightforward. We would take off from Vancouver, climb up high way over the Rocky Mountains and descend into Calgary. No fuss. But in most single engine Cessnas, just climbing over the Rockies isn't practical because A, the little Cessna might not go that high and B, even if it did, it would need oxygen because it's not a pressurized airplane like Air Canada flies. So our plan is to cross the Rockies in the Crow's Nest Pass, taking a not so direct route from Cranbrook through Fernie and Sparwood. But the Rockies are not the only mountain range in BC. There's also the Coast Mountains and the Cascades to go through before we get to the Rockies. If the weather is perfect, we could climb up high and go directly over the Coast Mountain and Cascades. They're not as high as the Rockies. In fact, that is exactly what many pilots do. But Janine and I prefer to fly lower through the valleys for a couple of reasons. A. The passes and valleys are often flyable even when the direct route over the top is blocked by clouds. B. We only have one engine. We really like the idea of having roads below us as an emergency landing option. And the passes and valleys happen to be where the roads go. So we're taking the long way, actually the scenic route in the very best sense of the phrase. We'll fly up the Fraser Valley to Hope, then along the Hope Princeton Valley past Manning Park to Princeton. From there we'll continue along the Samokameen River Valley to Oliver, BC, one of our favorite picturesque airports, for a fuel and a picnic lunch. Then it's the longest leg of our journey, Oliver to Cranbrook, along the US border to Grand Forks, the valley and Arrow Lake to Castlegar, following the Kootenai River past Nelson, along Kootenai Lake to Creston, and a final set of valleys through the last of the Cascades to Cranbrook, at the western edge of the Rocky Mountains. We'll spend the night in Cranbrook because we want the option of going through the Crow's Nest Pass at first light before the winds have a chance to pick up. That right there is the essence of our plan for avoiding turbulence going through the Crow's Nest Pass, early in the morning as possible. Of course, that's just a plan. I'm sure the reality will have something to say about it all. And what really happens, well, that's why it's called an adventure.